Welcome to One Minute Theatre Reviews. I'm Paul Seven Lewis, and this is my review of Crave by Sarah Kane at Chichester Festival Theatre. Four characters are standing on four travelators, which are going backwards, so they are constantly having to move forward. While in constant motion, they face front and speak, usually in a staccato sound, often in short single sentences or phrases, uh, some of them repeated. The effect is like a spray of bullets from a machine gun. They seem to be talking to you, but they may also be talking to each other or to no one in particular. The travelators keep them separate, so even if they are communicating, the effect is of isolation. Are these all the stream of consciousness of one person? Are they all dead or on their deathbeds facing some kind of judgment day? Uh, there's no plot, no clear relationships, not even well-defined characters. Uh, as someone says at one point, if this makes no sense, then you understood it perfectly. So I think I must have understood it perfectly. <laughs> but I did find it engrossing. Chichester's artistic director Daniel Evans, in his interview with me on this channel, said, talked about seeing the play anew um, because of the isolation we're all feeling at the moment. And I think that's true. But the director, Tanute Craig, really seems to have got to the heart of this play because it's not only the isolation, but also the darkness of human existence. Well, that's my one minute review. Keep watching for more about Sarah Kane's Crave at Chichester Festival Theatre. When she wrote the play, Sarah Kane offered no help in how to stage her text. And it's been done in many ways, uh, for example, with the characters together in a room. But to note Craig's decision to stage Crave in this way, both in concept uh, and in the realisation in Alex Loud's set, is pure genius, um, even if it may have been triggered by the requirements of social distancing. These anonymous, traumatised characters are truly isolated and stuck on their own relentless path. Here I am in the darkness again, says one. On the edge of nothing comes the liturgical response. You wouldn't be surprised if this was a play by Samuel Beckett, uh, except there's none of the hope and courage that his characters show in their futile situations. Here, there seems to be only despair at the human condition. But I did find myself deeply disturbed by this bleak view of life. Um, I could perhaps have been more moved uh, if Cain had made her characters more like real people that I could connect with, but I hesitate to call this a failure on her part, as I assume it was a deliberate decision to make them anonymous, both in their names, A, B, C and M, uh, and disconnected emotionally from those watching. Much of what they say you might generously call aphorisms, um, like no one survives life. There are also echoes of other people's works. But none of that is a criticism. Uh, the borrowing reminded me of T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland. Um, I think that the poetry of this piece, and it is a poem, uh, is not simply in what is said, but how it's said. So during the play, uh, someone describes poetry as language for its own sake. Uh, but the language of this poem has a kind of jagged beauty um, because within its uh, cadence uh, words about need and rejection constantly jab at you and every so often a line really brings you up short like um, what I sometimes mistake for ecstasy is the absence of grief. The actors were impressive. Neediness and desperation pervaded all that they did. Some of what they talked about was very upsetting. Erin Doherty, playing possibly the most defined character, mentioned in a sometimes strangulated voice the rape and abuse she'd received and talked about her poor self-image. Uh, and Jonathan Slinger's character first announced he was a paedophile, which then coloured a subsequent long and touching monologue about love, uh, which itself was later contradicted by his unpleasant uh, cynicism. Alfred Enoch and Wendy Quay as well. It was a bravura performance by all concerned. The sound by Anna Clock comprised uh, scratchy, disjointed low notes played on, I, I think, a cello, um, which was discomforting in just the right way. And Rabbi Deeper's background film of images of the characters, sometimes negative or blurred, uh, added rather than distracted. 
I was particularly struck by a close-up of Erin Doherty's face and the words, what have they done to me, appearing in writing on her skin. When one character talked of a horror so deep only ritual can contain it, I couldn't help thinking of the horrors that were being contained on this occasion because they were being presented within the ritual of a play. But when I say contained, I mean only just. At the end, in quite biblical language, the characters embrace the freedom of death and the play ends with a blackout. I was left in that darkness, battered and bruised. I give Crave at Chichester Festival Theatre four stars. If you'd like to see it, performances are being live streamed until the 7th of November 2020. And talking about the transmission, the process of logging in to view the event was very straightforward and I was pleased that I was able to sit back and watch it on my telly with a good picture uh, rather than on a blurry zoom or uh, the small screen of my laptop. The live broadcast went without a hitch when I saw it. We had front views, side views and close-ups but in a way that enhanced the performance. The way the production was done had the advantage that, although it was a theatre show, it didn't look like a film of a stage show because it could actually be a film um, of four people trapped in any empty space. So congratulations all round. If you'd like to be the first to see my future reviews and other videos about theatre, please subscribe. You can also read my reviews at oneminutetheaterreviews.co.uk and you can listen to me talking about stage musicals and playing some great songs from them on boxofficeradio.co.uk which is also available as a podcast on mixcloud.com. Thank you for watching.